Counts Week, and thank you for joining us for the Countdown Round Finals mashup. In honor of the national finals we couldn't hold yesterday. Though we're not together for this year's national competition, we can still kick this off with a short welcome from national competition sponsor, Raytheon Technologies. Hello, mathletes. This is Tracy Gray from Raytheon Technologies coming to you from my home office here in Prosper, Texas, just north of Dallas. Though we can't all meet in person like we usually do in May, math and problem solving are worth celebrating, perhaps now more than ever. In this environment, we're learning the importance of being adaptable and open to new ways of thinking and learning. This is also teaching us a lesson on the importance of community. Raytheon Technologies has served as title sponsor of the Math Counts National Competition since 2009. And we are proud to be part of the Math Counts community, a community full of future STEM leaders and innovators. Enjoy the countdown round finals mashup. Unfortunately, I already know how I'll fare against the likes of Daniel and Luke, who are recent champs. So stay mathy. Actually, I'm not sure that's a thing. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun with it. Thank you, Tracy, and thank you, Raytheon Technologies. Now, let's tackle the Countdown Round Finals mashup. You're about to go head-to-head -head with some of the top young mathematicians in the country with a virtual twist. We've picked some of our favorite questions from Raytheon Math Counts National Competitions for you to solve. And then we'll flash back to the real matchups so you can see how you stack up against our national competitors from 2014 to 2019. Here's how it works. You'll need a pencil, paper, and stopwatch. Go ahead and pause this video if you need a minute to gather your supplies. As soon as the math problem is revealed on your screen, Quickly pause our video before the problem disappears. Start your stopwatch and begin working on your solution. We'll have a three, two, one countdown on the question slide to let you know the video is about to progress from the question to the real life countdown round moment. Students in the video have 45 seconds to answer, but take all the time you need. Remember, these are the best mathletes in the country who trained for this. These could easily take the rest of us five to 10 minutes or more to solve. Once you have your answer, stop your stopwatch and see how long it took you to solve the problem. Then unpause our video to see how it went down at nationals and to get the answer. After that, you can check out one possible solution we provide. And then finally, congratulate yourself for giving it a try or getting it right. All right, now let's play. Mathletes, get ready for the first question. Let's see how our national competitors did. A circular table has T seats. With 11 of the seats occupied, the table is not full, but each unoccupied seat is adjacent to an occupied seat. What is the absolute difference between the greatest and the least possible values of T? Suyash. 10. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Daniel. 21. 21 is correct. Here's a possible solution. The table is not full, so there must be at least one empty seat, as shown on the left. On the right, we can see there can be, at most, two empty seats between each pair of occupied seats. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. There are 99 adults in swap meal. Time. No. Sorry, time has been called. There are 99 adults and one child in a room. How many? Kevin. 75. 75 is the correct answer. Here's a possible solution. 4% is the same as one over 25. Our one child must be in a room with 25 total people. Therefore, we need 75 adults to leave the room. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. 
Two lines in the coordinate plane have y-intercepts of 2 and 8. The two lines intersect at a point 0.9 comma y. What is the absolute difference between the slopes of the two lines? Express your answer as a common fraction. Andrew. 2 over 3. 2 over 3 is correct. Here's a possible solution. The slope between two points is the difference in y-coordinates over the difference in the corresponding x-coordinates. Subtracting the two slopes, we see the difference is two-thirds. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. Xavier randomly picks an integer x from 1 to 6 inclusive, and then Yvonne randomly picks an integer from x plus 1 to 7 inclusive. What is the probability that Yvonne picks the number 3? Express your answer as a common fraction. Andy. 11 thirtieths. I'm sorry, that is not the correct answer. Kevin. 11 over 180. 11 over 180 is the correct answer. Here's a possible solution. The only two cases in which Yvonne can pick the number three are shown. The sum of the probabilities of case one and case two is 11 over 180. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. What is the fewest number of nine inch by nine inch tiles needed? Yes, Easton. 896. 896 is correct. Wow. Here's a possible solution. Calculating the floor's total area in square inches and then dividing by the 81 square inches of one tile shows us 896 tiles are needed. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. The novel Cat Lawyer is 300 pages long and averages 240 words per page. The sequel to Cat Lawyer, Probable Clause, is 60 pages longer and averages 30 more words per page. In terms of the total number of words, by what percent is Probable Clause longer than Cat Lawyer? Andrew. 35. 35 is the correct answer. Here's a possible solution. Setting up the ratio of the sequel's total words to the original's total words, you can simplify to see that the sequel is 135% of the original or 35% longer. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. The smallest integer of a set of consecutive integers is negative 32. If the sum of these integers is 67, how many integers? Oh. Swap nail. 67. Time. 67 is the correct answer. Here's a possible solution. Building the sequence up to positive 32 gets us to a sum of zero. Adding 33 and 34 to the set gets us our sum of 67 and a total of 67 integers. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. In Anna's collection of snakes, 30% are striped and 70% are plain. Her most recent measurements yield an average length of 11 inches for all of the snakes and an average length of 13 inches. Yes, Ethan. 12. Time has expired. 
Her most recent measurements yield an average length of 11 inches for all of the snakes and an average length of 13 inches for the plain snakes. What was the average length in inches of the striped, yes, Suyash? Six and one third. Six and one third is correct. Here's a possible solution. Assume Anna starts with 10 snakes, a good number to use with these percentages. We can determine the total length of three striped snakes is 19, so a striped snake averages six and one third inches. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. If T, H, O, and R are distinct positive integers such that T squared plus H squared equals 25, yes, Jessica? 120. Pick up Mjolnir, because 120 is the correct answer. Here's a possible solution. We see the only values to consider are one squared through five squared, since six squared is greater than 29. Only one of these is not used. The rest fall into place nicely. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. What is the value of the express? Edward. 16. 16 is the correct answer. Here's a possible solution. The expression that looks complicated can be simplified with properties of exponents that use relatively easy computations. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. Two points, A and B, are chosen at random on the... Andy. Two thirds. Two thirds is the correct answer. Here's a possible solution. A circle can be divided into six equal parts, each with core length equal to the radius of the circle. From any point A on the circle, point B can be placed on two thirds of the circle so that chord AB is greater than the radius. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. If X circle R equals X squared plus R and P triangle H equals P over H plus P, yes, William? 25. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. What is the value of three circle seven quantity, triangle four quantity, Triangle five. Jadon. 24. 24 is correct and we are tied. Here's a possible solution. When the order of operations is applied, as shown, the defined circle rule and triangle rule create a value of 24. Mathletes, Get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. Eight marbles numbered one through eight are placed in a bag. Luke. One over six. One over six is the correct answer. Here's a possible solution. For every possible combination of three marbles, there are six orders in which they could have been chosen. Only one of those will be in decreasing order. Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. The fifth term of an arithmetic sequence is 13. Yes, Daniel? 117. The correct answer is 117. Here's a possible solution. The middle term of an arithmetic sequence is always the mean of the sequence. So the sum of the sequence is the number of terms times the value of the middle term.
Mathletes, get ready for the next question. Let's see how our national competitors did. In a barn, 100 chicks sit peacefully in a circle. So, Luke. 25. 25 is the correct answer. I love it. Here's a possible solution. For any individual chick, there are four equally possible outcomes. Packed from the left only, packed from the right only, packed from both sides, or unpacked. So each chick has a one in four chance of being unpacked. With 100 chicks, we would expect one quarter, or 25, to be unpacked. Thanks for playing, and we hope you enjoyed the Countdown Round Finals mashup. If you're interested in trying entry-level Countdown Round problems, please visit mathcounts.org mashup.